People on Prince Edward Island woke up to new COVID-19 restrictions this morning. Gyms are closed, indoor dining not allowed. Schools are staying online at least until January 31st. Dennis King is the premier of Prince Edward Island. He is in Charlottetown. Premier King, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you very much for having me. It's great to be back on. As you look out to the next couple of weeks, how high do you expect patient numbers in your ICUs to get? Uh, well, I mean, we're, we're, I think we're at the point where we're anticipating uh, a, a bigger number and hoping for it to be less than that. I mean, as it stands today, uh, we have uh, 10 in hospital who are being treated for COVID, three of which are in the ICU, uh, which is uh, a, a big number for us when you look at our capacity. And we're trying to do everything we can over this next little while to keep that number as low or as stable as possible. Uh, knowing that that will be a challenge with the very contagious nature of this variant. And you have, just to let people across the country know, 20 intensive care beds. That's it. Yeah, we have a little bit of a surge capacity beyond that if we needed to, uh, but 20 is our, is our regular count, and that's the number we're trying to deal with. And these are 20 ICU beds, not just for COVID. These are for our regular uh, uh, things that we would deal with on a day-to-day -day basis within our healthcare system. So the challenge we face is... is uh, is just that, and it's and it's certainly worrisome, and that's why we're taking some of the measures and the extent that we have gone throughout this COVID, erring on the side of caution has been because of, uh, of elements such as that. We're going to talk more specifically about those restrictions in just a minute, Premier, but I wonder, as you look forward, look ahead, rather, do you expect you're going to need help from, from other provinces or the federal government? Have you been having discussions on that front? Yeah, we certainly have different contingency plans that are in place. Uh, and when we look uh, beyond our borders, we know there could be help there. On the first minister's call last week, we talked about the, uh, the potential for the federal government to help intervene with provinces, uh, whether it's through the army or other measures. So, so those are some of the uh, things that we're looking at right now where we're not in uh, that need yet. Uh, and we are hopeful not to be in that need, but uh, that's certainly part of our contingency planning uh, should we need to go down that road. Restrictions, some will say very helpful, others find them very controversial, and, and they've been through this pattern before, and th they're upset that they're coming again, not just in your, in your province, but right across the country um, as new restrictions are, are brought in or old restrictions are brought back. So why do you think these restrictions... Neat. Why is this the right course of action now at this stage in the pandemic? Yeah, I just think it's uh, obviously, uh, I don't think anybody would say they like this or would want to be in this situation. Uh, but I really do think from a public health perspective, looking at the numbers we're looking at, uh, not just in PEI, but in the region and in the country and how that has grown so quickly, we're really just trying to do everything we can to contain it, to stabilize it, and to try to keep it as level as possible because of the challenges we face with uh, with, with a growing number. So uh, these are difficult days. Uh, many of us had hoped and thought that these days were behind us. And I can honestly tell you that there wouldn't be any premier or government leader uh, anywhere that wants to have to implement these types of measures. Uh, but uh, we're trying to do it for the next couple of weeks because uh, we need to. Uh, and we're trying to protect as many as we can here in PEI, which we, uh, through what we hope will be this final surge of, of COVID in one way, shape or form. What kind of signs or indicators are you going to be using to try to determine whether January 31st is the time to, to lift these restrictions safely? Yeah, I mean, there's a number of factors that we were outlining on our briefing yesterday. It's obviously, it's not just the number of cases, but it's the hospitalizations connected to those cases. Uh, it's the uh, intensive care patients that might be involved in the hospitalizations. And it's also our, our, our booster numbers, which in some of our age demographics are high, but in others that are lagging. Uh, so th there's a multitude of factors here that are at play. And we're trying to look at each and every one of those uh, every day to see what the seven and 14 day averages are versus what we're uh, seeing in terms of the booster and the vaccination uh, process and trying to measure all that and bring it together and, and really find a way each day to say we need to go stronger or we need to back up or, you know, and try to let science guide us uh, with the best data we have. It's, it, and it's an imperfect science. And I think, quite honestly, I think that's what it frustrates a lot of people is there's just no simple diagram for us to get through COVID uh, and the goalposts uh, that we have tried to erect 
have moved a little bit or they've narrowed and, and it's, it's, it's frustrating for people and it's frustrating for those of us who are in leadership positions trying to go through it as well. Dr. Morrison said yesterday that the restrictions could be lifted before January 31st. I don't want to give people false hope or give them hope only to have it dashed, but, but do you have a sense that that might be the case, that these might be lifted sooner rather than later? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I'm trying my very hardest to be as level as I can throughout this and try to avoid the, you know, the major ups and downs that have gone with COVID. I'm very hopeful some of the indicators were troublesome over the last few days, and that has forced us uh, to, to make uh, and undertake some of the measures that we have. But at the same time, you know, we have had tremendous adherence to the public protocols, and I think everyone in PEI is trying to do the best they can to to not spread uh, the variant, uh, you know, to the full extent that they can. So, uh, you know, I remain hopeful. We will look at it on a day-to-day -day basis. And if we need uh, uh, to go harder, I don't know what's left to go uh, in terms of the restrictions, uh, but we'll try. And if we can start to back off, uh, that will be wonderful too, because that will mean we're starting to get over the crest of this wave and to make our way back uh, to where we need to be and where we want to be. Public health measures, these restrictions, they without a doubt have an impact on businesses all across this country. In your province, though, the Canadian Federation of Independent Business Atlantic Director, I should say, Louis-Philippe Gauthier, says that your province needs to provide more support to the businesses that are affected. What are the plans on that front? How are you helping businesses? Oh, no, I think, uh, you know, uh, he's absolutely right on that. Uh, we have tried to respond as quickly as we can throughout this, and we've had really strong uh, uh, response from an economic perspective for businesses, uh, for NGOs, and for employees as well. Uh, so we, we have a cabinet committee that's in place. Uh, they're working on a number of measures that will be targeted towards employees who are, who are displaced, also to small businesses who are uh, forced to suspend some of their operations or change how they do. Uh, and throughout this process, we've tried to do everything that we can to keep as many people a whole or as close to whole as possible. Uh, and that's what our programs that we will begin to announce tomorrow uh, will be geared toward and we'll try to do the best we can uh, to try to get people through this to the best extent we can. Premier King, I can't let you go without asking you about potatoes. The export ban on PEI's potatoes is ongoing. So what can you tell us? What's the latest on resolving that dispute with the U.S.? Uh, well, we haven't uh, made the progress that we had hoped uh, to see or that we need to see here in the province, which is uh, to have CFIA and the Government of Canada lift the uh, self-imposed ban of potatoes to be shipped uh, into the United States. And I think we need to see that uh, self-imposed ban lifted because we do have the science uh, that supports uh, the safety of our, our table stock and fresh potatoes. Uh, and we're shipping them all across Canada and they're being consumed by Canadians from coast to coast. Uh, so we need to have that removed so we can begin the process. Uh, if it is a trade issue, which it seems to be, uh, let's get it out of the hands of the scientists uh, and get it into the hands of our trade negotiators so we can get this uh, resolved as quickly as possible. This is a $150 million hit to our economy here in PEI. Uh, these are difficult and bleak days with COVID and everything else uh, and facing the economic challenges that we face because of this unneeded and unwarranted potato ban uh, has been difficult for PEI and we need to get through it. Premier King, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Neil. It was good to see you. I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.